let the peace, love and blessings of Jehovah God and his Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God, the all-sufficient helper, everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. Spiritual food, St. Matthew chapter 20, verses 26 to 28. But it shall come, but it shall not be so among you. But whatsoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. Quote, Brethren, anybody who is not prepared to adhere to this admonition spelled out in the above portion of the Bible should make way for others. It is noted that your entire concentration is on money. You often ponder on what brother out of the cross and star is going to do with all the money. You think this way because you consider brotherhood a foolish place. Since you are so anxious about money in brotherhood, if I may ask, does the money belong to any of your parents? Or did you bring anything with you when the call was extended to you? You should know that Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is not a worldly place which entertains petition writing against one another over cases of embezzlement of funds. What is found here is serving God. There is no room for stealing, for falsehood and other evil practices. Nobody has gone to South Africa since her emancipation from the clause of apartheid. Also, Liberia has again resumed another warfare because of ignorance. It is our duty to go to all these warfare areas like Burundi, South Africa, Egypt and other places to spread these tidings within this time. However, there is great joy among the children of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star because, according to a local proverb, a child cannot be beaten by a masquerade when his father is in the arena. The inhabitants of Burundi and other warring areas are my children. Because of the criminal activities of the churches, the inhabitants of these war-torn regions have denied the existence of God. More so, because the high-ranking members of the churches are corrupt and not interested in providing food for the starving people in these areas, it is your responsibility to visit my children in these places. You should always come here with the intention of helping the destitute and offering sacrifice to God with whatever little thing you have, but not to come here in search of food or money and other mundane things. What is expected of us in the kingdom is to practice peace, love and joy since we have been redeemed. We are advised also to help other people to come to this glory. You should liberate those in prisons, in hospitals, in individual houses, the chiefs, and whoever you find in the streets. Do not impute sins to anybody. Do not come here to tempt or cause distractions of any kind for the kingdom abhors such activities. At this moment, 
There is great joy in heaven and abundant peace on earth. Those who are Judas reincarnate are enjoined to take away their thoughts from money. Otherwise, they will be destroyed with fire. Anytime you point accusing finger at a child, you are directly doing it to me. Anything said against the world is directed at leader Abu. Also, you hate me if you hate anybody. The whole world is one. There is no more division. Brethren, everybody believes in the Father, and the Father equally believes in them. Our Father has manifested to salvage the entire mankind because his death on the cross was not only for Africans or Russians or Jews, men or women, but also for everyone and everything. The entire humanity is saved and there is no child of perdition in the whole world. The Father's weapon is love, which is employed to overcome every opposition to restore peace in the world. Heal us, restore joy, and bring about salvation. The children of the kingdom should therefore coexist in peace, in love, and harmony. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love art no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. That was in John chapter 15, verses 12 to 15. Brethren, the testimony of our brother from Zaire was a confirmation of what the Father said about the hardship experienced in that country, which has resulted from lack of belief. This is the prevailing situation in the whole world. Mankind is likened unto Saul because of their distrust in God. The inhabitants of the world would have experienced an atmosphere of peace if they have lived in the presence of God. Anybody seen complaining of problems should be identified as an unbeliever in God. It is now the time for us to go into the world and show the light of peace to its inhabitants, for they would believe in God and receive salvation when enlightened about the kingdom of God on earth. In the real sense, all those that are referred to as thieves are not actual thieves, but they indulge in these acts because of lack of enlightenment. Equally, those you consider to have killed one another are in actual sense not murderers, but they indulge in such nefarious activities because they have not yet received the peace, the truth, and salvation of God. If enlightened by you, they would not have done that. Love is a strong tool, brethren. It is only love that is required in the kingdom. If you possess bodily love and exhibit it to people in the world, this would convince everybody that you are my disciples and will bring salvation to the whole world. As the word said by Christ during his encounter with Saul on the latter's mission to Damascus not fulfilled, in Acts chapter 9 verses 4 to 16, it says, And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? 
And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what you must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, and that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints in Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Brethren, who have been able to accomplish what Saul did? No person in the world has been able to achieve similar feat like Saul. When he became converted, henceforth all those categorized as sinners, as murderers and thieves are my tools. These set of people and the whole world at large were like Saul. But the Father in his mercy has transformed them from Saul to Paul. You have been asked to go. For the Father is always before and behind you. He is omnipresent in rivers, in seas, in mountains, in the heavens, in hell. He is the wind, his volcano, and the rest of the phenomena. You do not have any problem so long as you carry out the Father's work. The Father has put a stop to falsehood and deceit. The Father is the sole owner of all governments, all departments, all armed robbers, murderers, various races, both black and white, the children, men and women. Spiritual Chorus O oh blood of the Lamb, O oh blood of the Lamb, if I should use my blood, to lay foundation, no power will be able to destroy my hand, the work. Brethren, our Lord Jesus Christ died because of me, because of you and the entire world. That is why he has showered abundant life, peace, blessings on everybody and we now live in absolute oneness. There are no longer problems in the whole world. However, what appears to be a problem is your persistent loitering in my presence. You are implored 
to scatter abroad and disseminate the good tidings of the new kingdom to all the inhabitants of the world so that when they believe, salvation will be extended to them. An illustration on God's omnipotence. Brethren, I want to use this story to drive home the theme of this gospel and at the end of this illustration you would certainly realize that even when you do not see God, God seeks for you. That is why you should not lament anymore. Do not also consider yourself as having perished, for you would not perish if God does not approve of it. There was once a certain rich man. After a time, his riches suddenly vanished and nobody could reveal the source of his misfortune. His wretched state was no longer hidden. He became so poor that he and his wife had nothing to sustain themselves. The condition became deplorable to the extent that the man and his wife had no job, they had no relative, no money, no food and other necessities of life. The family continued to live in their miserable condition. And it happened that one day the king of the city died and the subjects did everything possible to bring the dead king back to, the, to life, but failed. According to the story, the poor man's wife also died almost at the same time with the king. It should be noted that the poor man's wife died at a time when the man was experiencing the most severe bite of poverty. As he was crying over his wife's death, a dwarf whose nativity was unknown appeared from nowhere. Since the poor man did not have even a mite, the short man stretched forth the broom that he had in his hand and hit the dead woman and she immediately came back to life. The dwarf handed the broom to the poor man and instructed him to touch anybody who is dead with it and that the person would be revived. As earlier pointed out, this incident occurred almost simultaneously with the king's death. When the poor man passed by where the dead king was, Lane, he casually expressed his sympathy over the king's death and promised to bring the king back to life if he would be given clothes as his compensation. When the people heard what the poor man said, they provided clothes and vehicle for his conveyance to the spot where the king was. When he got to the spot, the subjects of the dead king promised to split the king's wealth into two parts and one part would be given to him if he was able to resurrect the king. But conversely, if he fails to accomplish the promise of reviving the king, he would himself be put to death. The poor man accepted the condition and ask everybody to leave the room, that he should be left alone with the king's corpse. While in the room, he struck the king with the broom and immediately he was resuscitated. From this illustration, it can be seen that what is impossible with man is possible with God. Most of you easily lost hope in God you do not have any divine wisdom and for that reason you cannot do anything and cannot even sing praises to God. The inhabitants of Burundi have lost hope in the existence of God. God is the I am. Let me continue the illustration about the poor man. So it happened that the poor man became the richest man in the whole world. From that moment, 
he brought the king back to life. Accordingly, it was not up to a week after his return to his house that another great king died. The death of the second king shook the whole city. Immediately a messenger was dispatched to bring this man. This time he flew with an, with an helicopter to the spot where the dead king was. When he got there, as in the previous arrangement, he was given a condition that if he succeeded in reviving the dead king, his wealth would be shared into two and one part will be his, but he will meet instant death if he should fail. After accepting the condition, he struck the dead king and he was revived. And the subjects of the dead king adhered to the agreement. One part of the king's wealth was given to him. At this point, let us ponder over this sudden change in the condition of this man. Did he engage in stealing, in doing menial jobs or education in order to amass so much wealth? Also, did he apply his wisdom so that he is so wealthy? This is to demonstrate how wonderful God is. He is omnipotent. Furthermore, it was not long that another king passed away. This third king was the greatest among the three kings. The man was again invited and this time he went to the spot with a private helicopter. There is bound to be some temptation in whatever everyone does and it is also said that Woe betides whosoever it comes true, for it would be better for such a person to have a mighty stone tied around his or her neck and be drowned in a deep river. At where the third king was laid, the same arrangement was reached, and as usual, he asked the people around to leave. Then he struck the corpse gently with the broom as usual, but to his greatest amazement the king remained dead. He repeated it, but the king was not revived. At this point the short man was very confused. Meanwhile a lot of people were outside waiting for him. After one hour the crowd rushed into the, room, the house and discovered that he could not bring the king back to life. He was eventually killed and buried that night. Brethren, since God is merciful and does not desert his beloved people, just at that moment the dwarf appeared again with another broom. He struck the grave open and revived the dead man with the broom. When he had been resuscitated, the dwarf narrated what happened and why his broom was unable to raise the third king. The dwarf disclosed that the man's wife had changed the broom and that at that moment his wife was enjoying herself with another man at home. That they had concluded plans to marry each other. He was asked by the dwarf to have nothing to do with his wife anymore and that he should throw his wife from the story building so that she would die. Brethren, the woman was not the cause of what took place, but it happened in order to strengthen someone's faith. The man flew back in his helicopter the same night, and when he got home, just as the dwarf had revealed, 
he met a young man and his wife engaged in serious dance. When he knocked at the door, the woman inquired who was knocking at the door. And when the husband answered that he was the person, and when she recognized her husband's voice, she was surprised and opened the door. The man asked the young man who was with his wife to leave, that he had no problem with him. He then turned to his wife and flung her out of the window of the story building to the ground, as was instructed by the dwarf, and she was buried that same night. After her burial, the man continued to live a wealthy life with the members of his family. It is now our place to draw our lesson from this episode and refrain from sins. You should not heed to anybody who tells you to indulge in falsehood. You and you should not indulge in murder or to steal for there is nothing good in all these activities. Draw your lesson from the woman's situation who lost her life because of evil. Let us coexist in love. There should be no jealousy. The fact that our Lord Jesus Christ died for our sinful nature, his flawless blood had taken away all evil. You are enjoined to desist from lamentation, but should exhibit love, peace, and hope in any condition. God is able to do anything. This is the long-expected kingdom that was dreamt of by King Nebuchadnezzar and interpreted by Daniel. This is also the kingdom that John saw and was spoken about by our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the fullness of time and that is why you are advised not to have hope on anybody but the Father. You should, err, you should search ahead in accomplishing what is good. Brethren, I do not want to be tedious unto you. It is said a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let, you, let he who has ears to hear, let him hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.